From the very beginning, Terraria players have been discovering ways to break the game. Whether it's an exploit, a glitch, or a lack of bouncing, people love breaking Terraria. So today we'll be looking at every major exploit players have used over the past 12 years of Terraria's history. And I'll even show you some that are still in the game today. Now for this video, I'll be talking exclusively about exploits used by the wider community in the single player PC edition of the game. Speedrunning, multiplayer, and console exploits are a whole other video entirely. So, without the way, let's jump into it. Now, the first major duplication abuse popped up in Terraria version 1.1 with the infinite music box glitch and the infinite chest glitch. Now, infinite music boxes was really simple to do. All you needed to do was place a recorded song onto a table with some back wall behind it, and it would explode into an infinite amount of them, which you could then sell for a profit. The infinite chest glitch was a little more involved and used the brand new wiring mechanic. For this glitch, you needed to place a chest on some active stone and place at least one item inside. Every time you activated the stone, it would duplicate the chest a couple times. But this got even more wacky when you stood on a solid block and tried to place a chest on top of the glitched one. Both of these were eventually patched though in version 1.2. That being said, 1.2 wasn't perfect and featured two very popular exploits. The first one, I know you've probably heard about. This is a hoik in Terraria. Now this was first discovered in Terraria 1.2 but wasn't really known as outside of a small group of people until Terraria 1.2.4, as that's when Zero Gravitas put together a wonderful foreign thread in a video that highlighted all of the amazing things it could do. Hoiks, if you didn't know, allow players and other entities to be relocated at incredible speeds and can be used for a whole bunch of things. Since Zero's post, the developers have acknowledged this glitch as more of a feature and have made sure it's stuck around in future builds of the game, so you can still have fun with this today. The next issue in Terraria 1.2 was more of an oversight with titanium armor and it allowed you to become invincible. For this one, all you needed to do was have nine buffs active and have your 10th buff be the shadow dodge set bonus which you'd get after striking an enemy. Since Terraria had reached its max buff limit, the debuff that's meant to apply so that you only get invincibility for two seconds won't happen, so you're completely invincible for 20 seconds. If you strike an enemy once it's run out, you can just keep doing this infinitely. This was corrected in Terraria 1.2.2 when the max buff limit was increased. Moving on to Terraria 1.3, specifically 1.3.0.8, a very popular exploit was the infinite house. This house was super simple to build and would trick the game into thinking you had an endless number of rooms for NPCs. And therefore, so long as the requirements were met, they would just keep spawning and sharing this strange contraption. This was patched in 1.3.1, but don't worry, we'll come back to this. Another oversight that was exploited a lot in Terraria 1.3 was the infinite bait setup. This one was super simple and used the newly introduced flower boots. These boots would grow flowers onto any piece of grass and those flowers once broken have the chance to spawn critters which could be used for fishing. So for an infinite amount of bait all you needed to do was shoot a flare on the ground directly below you which would keep breaking the flowers, your boots would regrow them and you could swing a bug net and catch as much bait as you like. This was patched in Terraria 1.4 by greatly reducing the chances of critters spawned from plants grown when wearing flower boots. Time for another invincibility exploit and it's all thanks to the new introduced slimy saddle and target dummies. For this one, all you needed to do was place two target dummies next to each other, place a few blocks above them, and then bounce on their head. As you were bouncing, you were completely invincible to all forms of damage except for the Moon Lord. So long as you didn't use piercing damage on the target dummies yourself, this invincibility would work infinitely. And this was fixed in Terraria 1.4. Now 1.3.1 may have fixed the infinite housing glitch, but it also introduced the the infinite fishing glitch, and this is one of my personal favorites. For this one, all you needed to do was enable auto pause in the game settings, hold a fishing rod in your hotbar, and then open your inventory. Next, you remove one item from a stack, and as you right click to throw it out of your inventory, you press escape. If done correctly, you'll throw out two fishing lines in whichever direction you were gonna throw the item. You can keep going with this, and it can lead to some really wild results, but this was fixed in Terraria 1.4. It's Terraria 1.3. Point two, and the infinite house is back. The design had to be changed, but it still functioned in the exact same way, but it was short-lived 
and was patched in Terraria 1.3.3. Terraria 1.3.5 would be the last update the game saw for over three years, and during that time, the most infamous exploit involved duck statues. I've spoken about this one quite a few times on the channel, so I'll keep this brief. The max number of NPCs Terraria can have spawned at a single time is 200, and the max number of critters from a statue is 10. However, W1K figured out that once a duck transformed into its flying state, it became an NPC and not a critter, and therefore you could keep spawning them and max out the game's limit. Once that limit was reached, no other enemies could spawn, so you could do janky things like kill the cultist, skip the pillars, and go straight to the moon lord, so it became quite popular in the speedrunning community. This was fixed in Terraria 1.4, but there's still other ways to do this today. For example, the penguin statue, goldfish statue, and bunny statue will automatically convert spawned critters into their corrupt form during a blood moon, and these will also break the spawn limit. Back to duplication, the perfectly balanced man himself, Spiffing Brit, made one exploit very infamous after the launch of Terraria 1.4 and that was the infinite starfish glitch. This one worked pretty similar to the infinite music box glitch in 1.1, but here you needed to play starfish onto a hammered down platform and it would burst into an infinite amount of them, which you could sell for a profit. This was patched less than a week later in version 1.4.0.5. 1.4.1 introduced a new NPC spawn limit exploit thanks to the newly craftable beehives. Players could spawn as many bees as they wanted and fill up that 200 NPC spawn limit very quickly. This was patched in 1.4.1.2 less than a month later by making bees no longer spawn if there's more than 100 NPCs already spawned in the world. Moving on from breaking NPC spawn limits, it was time for the community to abuse Terraria's projectile limit, which is capped at 1,000 projectiles. The two methods for doing this rose to popularity during Terraria 1.4.2 and involved flares and beach balls. I've spoken Spoken about both of these on the channel before, so to keep it brief, you can max out Terraria's projectile limit by shooting a thousand flares or having a thousand beach balls in motion. Both of these methods have downsides though. Flares only stick around for 10 minutes and it takes 5 minutes to shoot 1000, which means you can only break the limit for 5 minutes. Beach balls can't be stacked and it takes a very long time to throw 1000 of them, but at least with this method, it'll keep working until you log out of the world. Once the projectile limit is reached, it means no other projectiles can spawn, so Daytime Empress of Light is a breeze. You also can't spawn projectiles, so it's best to get your summon spawned beforehand. This is currently still in the game, so you can try this out today. In the theme of breaking Empress of Light, in Terraria 1.4.4, you could become completely invincible to her and any other bosses thanks to Shimmer. When the player phases through Shimmer, they're inflicted with the Shimmering buff, and in Terraria 1.4.4, that made you completely invincible to all damage while this buff was applied. So if you constructed a giant tower to phase through, so long as you defeated the boss with summons before reaching the bottom, you couldn't be harmed. This was fixed in Terraria 1.4.4.4 by changing the buff so that it no longer granted invincibility to boss damage. The final thing we have to talk about today is another duplication glitch which allows you to get infinite crystal shards, and this is still working as of Terraria 1.4.4.9 should hopefully get fixed in Terraria 1.4.5. For this one, all you need to do is place a single block and then hammer a platform one block away, and when you go to place crystal shards in the middle, it'll explode into an infinite amount of them, which you can sell for a profit. Now, talking about these patch glitches and exploits today has filled me with such nostalgia. For me personally, I believe glitches are meant to be enjoyed in the moment. They're not something that needs to stick around. For future Terrarians, even though these are fun to do and witness, I'm glad that down the line, players will get to experience the very best version of the game without these. Also, with the ease of modding and journey mode, so many of the things we've covered today are more effort than they're worth, which takes me back to a different time when players didn't have such tools available to them. I feel privileged to have seen all of these firsthand over the years, and I hope today, if you're a newer player, you enjoyed this little look back. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Peace.